everyone, my name is Ariel and welcome back to my channel. It's like 7 a.m. so not quite as early of a start as some of the other mornings that I've caught you on these adventures. But I am out today with one of my best friends, Sammy down here, my little sister Greta. And we are headed out to hike Castle and Conundrum which are two local 14ers. Um, I don't know if you caught in my last video, but one of my goals for the summer is to hike slash climb all of the Elk Mountain 14ers, which are the ones that are local to me in the area that I live. This, uh, <laughs> the road up to this spot is like not one that my Subaru or the van could make it up to. So we borrowed my mom's car for the day and uh, it's definitely intimidating <laughs> driving my mom's car across the creek and over some like kind of gnarly, rocky, wandery stuff. But we made it and uh, now we hike. So technically the road does continue on past where we parked, but <laughs> it gets way gnarlier. It goes from like a four wheel drive kind of road where you just need some good clearance to like actual off-roading. <laughs> so we parked at the junction of Pearl Pass and the road up to Montezuma Basin. And we're walking up that road now for, I don't know, I think it's like half mile to a mile, so not too far, but definitely, definitely way gnarlier for the driving. That's the kind of car you need. So the road has officially ended and we're now hiking across this big like talus field and we're going up there. So we're taking a quick snack break and I've like become newly obsessed with these lemon flavored Go Macro bars and I sold it really, really hard at the grocery store when we were choosing flavors. I was like, no, Sammy, you have to get this flavor. This is the best flavor ever. It's my obsession. So this is the moment of truth. All right, moment of truth. I'm still a mocha chip person. Damn it. I know. It's a third. They're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. It's so funny because I'm like, pretty much all my bars have to have chocolate in them or I'm like, eh, I don't like them. And then I tried this lemon bar and I was like, is this lemon bar my new favorite? I think it might be. After some discussion, <laughs> we decided that there needs to be a caveat in here about her reaction. I had COVID in April 
and so I can't really smell anything and my taste is like meh so when I expected this these to have a lot more lemon I think they do I just have no idea <laughs> They're, they're, they're very lemony. Like you can, <laughs> if you have your taste buds and your normal sense of taste, you can taste it. <laughs> Just spent a little bit of time on the um, castle summit, ate a little snack, and now we're gonna actually take the ridge line across over there and head over to the summit of Conundrum. And it requires us to just like drop down a little bit and then pick back up, but it's not it's not all too far, just over there. So onwards we go. you want to stay baby just don't walk away i need you now fade it out all the time we spent alone fighting through the fire stone don't let me down i need you now cause i'm feeling worn out it's getting to me lost some heart trying to get on my feet caught in the madness i feel you somehow don't let me go, I need you right now I wanna be next to you, you wanna be next to me Holding our paper hearts, fading our broken dreams I wanna be next to you, you wanna be next to me Holding our paper hearts, fading our broken dreams I wanna be next to the top of conundrum and we're having a little lunch if you follow me on instagram you've seen this but this is my new favorite like trail snack it's literally like mashed sweet potato 
tuna and mayo and then you bring like crackers to dip it in i'm telling you next level so good kind of like this view so good so can we just all acknowledge and admire sammy's poncho tell me more about this poncho because it is amazing i really just hike for the fashion <laughs> But for real, you got this, where did you yeah, get this? I just got back from Peru, so I was hiking in the Andes. These are all what my Andean homies hike in, so, you know. I love it. My people. So fresh. Yeah. Look at how cute I look. So <laughs> stylish. <laughs> back over because as you can probably see and maybe hear there's definitely some weather rolling in so we're kind of in hyperdrive mode to get down we had to go obviously down to go back up and we're now actually heading down down from castle so we're gonna drop elevation quick which will be good but I'm definitely uh, <laughs> trying to beat this weather I do have a rain jacket you always got to bring a rain jacket but definitely don't like to be at this kind of elevation when the when the thunder and rain rolls in so we are gonna boogie on down. Catching on like a wildfire, feeling for a brand new start. Rain is gone, now it's so much brighter. A new song in my That was such a fun adventure. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really have Castle Conundrum on my radar until really recently. In fact, until I decided I was gonna hike slash climb all the Elk Mountain 14 years this year. But I'm so glad I made it onto the list because I really, really enjoyed that adventure. And it was so beautiful out, just views in all directions. And I think that we got really lucky with the date that we chose because by that evening, we had all of this smoke pour in from all of the fires that are happening around the West. And yesterday was literally the smokiest day that we've had this summer. I mean, there was like, you couldn't even see <laughs> some of the really prominent hills and mountains around where I live where normally you can look out and see them crystal clear like you couldn't even see that they were there so I'm really really glad that we got to sneak in that hike before all of that came in because I don't really actually think it would have been like all that safe to go out hiking in the kind of smoke that we had yesterday so glad that we got to go um, just like last time I want to take a couple minutes here at the end of the video to answer some of the questions that you guys had about this hike so I'm going to dive into that but before I do I want to say the one thing that I personally would do differently from this hike is wear slash bring a helmet. When I read that it was class two, I kind of figured that it would be, you know, more or less an easy walk up. And in a lot of ways it, it is a lot, it's a lot easier than pyramid was, but there's still a lot, a lot, a lot <laughs> of loose rock and loose scree. So we were really careful and mindful and really took our time. Um, but that is one suggestion that I would make that I would 100% without a doubt do differently next time. And I think that what I've learned from that experience is that no matter what the class system is for any of these mountains that I'm climbing to 
always bring a helmet just in case, especially because there's super light options these days. And so it's just like so easy to clip it on your backpack. So with that being said, let's jump into your questions. So the first question is, where is it located in Colorado? And uh, like I said earlier, it's in the Elk Mountain Range, which of course is, you know, you may not be familiar with what that means, but the Elk Mountain Range, I would say the, the most iconic landmark near and slash in the Elk Mountain Range is Aspen, Colorado. So all of the mountains that I'm, you know, working on climbing this year are in the Elk Mountain Range. So they are near Aspen, Colorado, which is my home. So quite a few of you wanted to know why the second peak was called Conundra and I actually had to look that up myself. Uh, <laughs> apparently back in the day when they were mining in the area, they found gold flakes in the river that runs off the other side, like in the area where the hot springs is. And they searched and searched and searched for like the reservoir of gold. I don't know the right word, but you know what I mean? Like the honey hole of gold within the mountain and they could never find it. So it was a conundrum that they found gold, but couldn't find like, you know, all of it, if that makes any sense. So of course there were a lot of you who wanted to know how long the hike is and how much the elevation changes. And that's gonna be really dependent on your vehicle because there is a road that can get you up quite a ways. And the more off-roady your vehicle is, <laughs> the further you can go. So like I said, we borrowed my mom's forerunner. She doesn't have like an off-roading forerunner. She has like the, I think it's a limited where it's got a decent amount of clearance and it's four wheel drive. So we could make it a good ways up the road, but their ro the road actually continued about two miles past where we parked. Um, so that takes off about four miles round trip. So from where we parked, it was roughly somewhere between seven and eight miles total and about 3,800 feet of elevation gain, at least that's what our stats said as an average. I don't know, we both had our GPS watch going and they did not say the same thing, but somewhere in that range. Um, I know that if you have to park at the bottom of the road, if you have a car that does not have good clearance um, and it's not four wheel drive, then it can be like up to 14 and a half miles and like 4,500 to 5,000 feet of vertical gain because you have to walk the whole road. And then I'm gonna assume that if you had like a sweet Jeep or like a really, really awesome like off-roading vehicle of some kind or even like a cool dirt bike that you could go again another two miles which would take four miles off round trip and at least another thousand feet of vertical gain so it really is a range on this one but I definitely do not recommend trying to get a two-wheel drive vehicle or a vehicle without good clearance further up that road because it does get pretty gnarly. Like there's a, a water crossing, which depending on the time of year that you do it can be pretty intense. And also like there were a couple sections that even in my mom's forerunner, I was very nervous, <laughs> very, very nervous about being able to make it over. So just be mindful and you know plan accordingly and just know that if you are going to have to park at the bottom of the road, it is gonna be a pretty long day. <laughs> so there are a handful of questions about like elevation and getting used to the altitude and how to prevent altitude sickness and things of that nature. Um, or like what I do for that. So personally, I don't do any, I live at 8,000 feet. So for me to go up to 14,000 feet, it's not like, all that crazy and I do quite a bit of hiking and climbing and things at these higher elevations. So I would say that my, you know, my body, my lungs and everything like that are used to these elevations. Um, but if you're not, it is really important to make sure you take some time to acclimate and really factor in the effect that the altitude is going to have on you and your pace <laughs> specifically. So uh, if you're coming from sea level and you're really interested in doing some of the Colorado 14ers, I think it's amazing. But if there's any way to give yourself a couple of days to acclimate to the higher elevation before you go up there, I think you'll be really, really happy. I think it will make a big difference. I do know that there are people who take um, that they are, there are like pills and things that can help you with altitude sickness. I have no experience with those myself, so I don't want to dive into it, but that is something you could do a little bit of research on. Um, I think best case scenario is really truly to just give yourself a little time to acclimate. And then while you're here, I mean, Aspen, Colorado is about 8,000 feet. Um, you know, while you're here, you can do hikes where you go up to maybe 10 or 11 and then come back down so you can see how that feels. And then again, the biggest factor is gonna be uh, knowing that you're probably gonna be moving quite a bit slower than you're used to. So if a mile takes you a certain amount of time back home, it most likely will take you a little bit longer here because your lungs will be feeling it. So um, it's one of the, you know, 
umpteenth reasons why you want to leave really early in the morning if you can just to really give yourself enough time because these you know these weather patterns they are unpredictable and it can be a perfect crystal clear bluebird day and like that the storms roll in so you really do want to be up and down off these mountains as early and efficiently as possible. So I got a few questions that I'll lump in the category of like exposure. You know, like one of the questions was specifically like any tips for ridge hiking that summits feel good, but the ridges feel really scary. And I think that again, that's most likely due to the exposure that you're dealing with. And I don't have any like magic secret thing. <laughs> I'd say one of the biggest things is just going slow and taking your time and being really mindful and giving yourself enough time that you can do that and then experience. I don't know. I used to be really intimidated by heights and then I, you know, fell in love with rock climbing and the more and more and more I went, the more comfortable I got with that sort of exposure. I mean, when I used to go climbing in the very beginning, I could not look down. And then when I'd have to like let go to be lowered off, I, it would be like the scariest moment of my whole day. And now I've been, you know, climbing for 10 years. So I don't like those, those sorts of things I don't think about as much, but I 100% like feel you and know how that feels. And what I would say is like, just stick with it. You know, the, the like <laughs> repetition really does make a difference. You do start to get used to it. And again, like give yourself time that you can move at a slow and comfortable pace for you so that you can be really mindful and really safe and know that you are, you know, um, doing it as safely as possible. So last couple questions here. Um, there was a question about like how windy it is up there and that's gonna be totally dependent on the day, but I would say most summits that I've stood on top of were very windy. I've had like pyramid was such a rare occasion, which is why we spent an hour on that summit where it was just like still and beautiful, but that has not been the norm <laughs> of my experience when I've, you know, of the mountains that I have climbed. So I'd say like be prepared for wind. Um, I loved having the hood that I could put over because it really, the wind really hurts my ears. Like the cold wind, it gives me like this deep ache in my inner ear. So having something to cover my ears is really helpful. And and then sometimes like you really truly need something that's going to break the wind like even your rain jacket will do um so yeah i would say be prepared for weather be prepared for wind it's just very exposed up there so even the littlest bit of wind can feel very very extreme and you know like i said it really is going to depend on the day but more summits that i've been on have been windy than not so one of the questions was how prepared do you need to be to hike a 14er and I mean, I think that no matter what you're doing, you need to be prepared for whatever the adventure is. And I feel like, you know, the like being prepared for a 14er in general, it's hard to say because there's such a wide range of what you can expect and what, you know, like ability level and fitness level that you would need to be at to accomplish summiting those that 14er because you know, like I said in last week's video about the pyramid summit, you know, there are ones where you can literally just walk a trail all the way up. And there are ones where you need like, you know, some more technical ish climbing skills to get to the top. So, you know, and then everything in between. So being prepared for the one on this end of the spectrum is going to be very different than being prepared on the one on this end of the spectrum. But no matter where you are and no matter what side of the spectrum you are, I'd say be prepared. Make sure you have the fitness level. Make sure that you, you know, are comfortable with the altitude. Make sure that you have like, you know, a plan for if something doesn't go as planned or you have options um, and make sure that you have, you know, like a good line of communication with everybody that you're hiking with, or if you're hiking solo that you're doing, you know, everything in your power to do it safely and to make sure people know where you are and, you know, those sorts of things. So I would say that preparation really is important. And if you are being called to go out and hike a 14er, I definitely think you should, but I think do a little bit of research, find the one that is going to best suit your ability levels right now, get yourself prepared and then get out there and go. And as you do more, you'll gain more confidence and you can start to, you know, 
push yourself a little bit harder and try harder things. Okay, so the last question was, am I gonna hike Capitol Peak? Which is, uh, if, you, if you haven't heard of it, it's a very well-known Colorado 14er because it has a knife edge um, that you have to walk across to get to the summit and it's got an insane amount of exposure and it's definitely, yeah, I mean, it's one of the deadliest Colorado 14ers. Um, unfortunately, I have, I have had friends pass away on that peak. Um, but yes, the plan is to do it. I am very excited about it. It's not actually like more technical than pyramid, at least my understanding. Um, but it is, a, there's a lot more exposure. So it is like a higher risk if something were to go wrong. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really excited about getting out there. I feel like it's well within my range and my comfort level. I think the only thing that would stop us from doing any of our 14er missions that we have planned for the rest of the summer is weather and smoke actually. Um, like I said earlier in, in this, like this smoke moved in um, like a couple nights ago and it has been, like yesterday was one of the smokiest days I've ever seen here ever in my entire life. And it was to a point where I like literally couldn't see, you know, mountains that are just across the way from where we live. So, yeah, that will definitely play a factor. Um, the air quality is rated unhealthy as of yesterday and today, and that's not something I want to be out um, climbing 14ers in. It's also like you wouldn't be able to see what's around you. So I'd say that that would really be the main thing that would get in the way of if we, you know, complete our mission, our goal for this summer. Um, and that would be totally out of our control. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I hope that answers all of your questions. Um, it's been so fun, like engaging in you, with you guys in this way and seeing how excited you are about getting out there and, you know, hiking and climbing some Colorado 14ers or just getting out there and hiking and climbing, you know, anything that challenges you and that, you know, lights you up inside. So keep adventuring and... Yeah, that's all I have for you this week. As always, if you like this video, if you found some value here, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can be here for all of the future summit adventures and all of the adventures yet to come. I'll see you next week.